Okay, so this will be for January the 23rd. Uh, there's no way to ease into this. This is probably going to be a longer video than usual. Alright, so this we had uh, Mike again, uh, Mike Andrews. He started going on about Dante's Inferno and which he was talking about rebellion obviously he's trying to refer to as satan and lucifer that's almost exchangeable to him that's a different story he i i, I either i misunderstood or he quoted wrong something about first samuel 115 and he started talking about rebellion witchcraft is sin devil worship i said roll over laughing my ass off I tried to look up what he was referring to. <clears throat> what I did come up with on 1 Samuel. Let me make sure I got it right here. Um, was 1 Samuel 15, 23. Give me just a second. Oh, I'm in those out Okay, well, there's a two of them. So in First Samuel, I'm, I don't have this one pre-set up, uh, where the actual witchcraft uh, is 15. I'm sorry, First Samuel 15, chapter 15, 23. Which uh, the only thing I had to say about that one is that which basically he was saying witchcraft is bad because. You're taking power into your own hands, which is in essence, sorry, the camera's off, <laughs> which is the rebellious aspect. So, I don't think it has anything necessarily other than you're not praying for his help, right? Anything against his plan is considered evil or bad. So, he, either I misheard him or he misquoted it, but I went ahead and found it. So, um, I thought I had that one. I have the other one set up anyhow. So the other one, again, I think he misquoted this one as well. I had to look it up. Was Isaac uh, 1412, How Art Thou Fallen, O Lucifer? So I have on here. Now, this one I do have prepared. Um, and. Which on my notes I said, here we go again. I'd rather praise the gods or goddesses that promote actual free will and self-responsibility than do what I say or perish isn't love or justice. So, to show what he was referring to, this is the one I actually have pre-set up here. Uh, he was referring to, and this is the Isaiah... Um, yeah, this is, uh, from 12, chapter 14, so, let me get my hands out of the way here, come on, so anyhow, it's referring to, like, a, like a fallen kingdom kind of deal, or, of a fallen king, and the rise and fall of Mercury representing, there we go, finally. How art thou fallen? Now, I think this he actually brought this up because some of our previous conversations. As you can tell, this is like the second to last of my notes. So, what I wanted to show was two things on here. And this is part of why I procrastinated so long. Is one, and I've said this in some detail, where, and I uh, will show expand on this in another time if necessary the lucifer that's represented in luciferian belief system is not the same quote lucifer in the bible however for pretend sake and for argument's sake i'm just going to get this out of the way what lucifer does represent in a lot of ways is the opposite of i know i'm holding it to the side for a second uh, okay is the opposite to a lot of like the main rules. A lot of the things that in the first commandments, and I've done the previous video 
showing side by side Luciferian rules to uh, Satan tenets to the Ten Commandments. So I'm not going to go over every detail now. But I'm going to highlight a couple of particular things where in the Ten Commandments a lot of things are mind crimes. Uh, so where you're committing a crime just by thinking something. So, okay, the symbol of an adversary is like the self-liberator and spiritual rebel that inspires uh, self-evolution, right? The ability to be able to, you know, take retrospect on your past and try to do better, right? Without you, Sometimes you need help from other people, but you also need to be able to, which kind of leads into this, you know, the adversary, uh, which he does not like that word, of Mike here, uh, from our previous conversation, symbolizes the spark of consciousness which questions everything, right? Even Einstein, I know you can't see it too well, but you've, in other videos, I have Einstein up there. That's one of my heroes as far as scientists. Like, you know, he, you know, one of the things he was about was like to question everything. Like, it's not just this but i'm just saying like it's good wisdom you know that you should question everything there's a point of like being over ridiculous but i think that science is a tool but that's a different story um but yeah you in order to become your own god you must have to have wisdom and strength to govern and guide yourself so i'm not going to go on like continuously with this aspect but Lucifer essentially represents from the actual system of guiding yourself. But there, my point is, before I move on, is that if you're an atheist watching my channel, like, there, there's not a carrot and stick with this. Like, you know, and I will touch on, like, paranormal here in a minute and stuff. Um, but there's not a carrot and stick. If you don't believe it or, like, witchcraft and stuff, like it doesn't work for you. Like, there's not, you're not going to get attacked for not doing anything. You know what I mean? That's the biggest flaw that I have with this system. Is like you can have other belief systems or not have a system at all. This is, I guess, what took this video so long to make. Is I knew this would come up. And, yeah, like if you don't believe in spirits or whatever, then there's no harm in it. You know what I mean? There's, not, there's no one's going to threaten you with torture. And I bring this up because I found this not looking for it. But if you was to look at, according to the God of the Bible, because I just mentioned in an Uncle Jesus video how I'd be happy if, like, if I was a Christian and I actually looked at this, like, God not answering prayers is probably the best thing for you. If you, if you actually believed in this shit, okay, the destructive day of the Lord. Like, this is essentially how he would treat anybody who is not of his side, right? Let's see here. The, um... Uh, yeah, and therefore I will be. I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove from their place, and the wrath of the lords of the ho of host in the day of his fierce anger. So this is what God Himself, the Lord of this book, has in mind as far as to treat anybody who's not in His favor. It shall be chased, row. I don't know what that means, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every uh, every man turn on on his own people and flee from his onto his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined onto them shall fall by the sword. So this is pre-gun days, but essentially, you know, you're going to get stabbed. Uh, their children shall be dashed to pieces. Uh, before their eyes. This is children that have no, that are innocent, right? You're just they're the victim of being the children of the parents who just who weren't in favor. The children don't even have a choice in a say. So I don't even want imagery for this. The children shall be dashed to, into pieces. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. I, I won't expand on what that means. If you're an adult, you know what that is, and, like, I, what the fuck? You know, this is from the Lord. This is terrible. Like, what the hell? 
Behold, I will stir up the Medes, I don't know what that is, against them. And this shall not uh, regard silver, and as for gold, and they will, and they shall not delight in it. Their bowels or bowls shall dash the young men into pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Um, I think I know what that means. <laughs> And there shall, and they shall not spare the children. Like this is what the French toast. I don't want to, you know, like outright get demonetized or whatever. But like, what is this? Like, this is from, you know, this is why I said what I said. Like, if I actually believed in this to be true, I would not want any favors from this guy. Like, this is not someone that you want to work with at all. Uh, so, um, the rest of this is going to be kind of a, a dry read. I know I was going to get the notes out of the way. But I wanted to expand on that. Like, if, you if you're not a Luciferian, no one cares. Like, it, you know, we wish you the best. And I hope that you're at least mature enough to, like, behave in society. But there's not a carrot and stick routine. I'm not going to threaten you with hellfire or, and then some. Whatever the hell that was. So, now that I got that off my chest, we'll just have a regular deal here and go over my notes so the last thing that popped up here is that all sin begins with witchcraft uh as he was expanding on that and i said i don't have any quotes this is him saying i don't have to listen to you saying that that's what lucifer was saying and uh claims not believing in god means you're a fool so here i wrote down funny how in reality, believing in what there is no evidence of is foolish. So, I thought about this, and what I was thinking at that time is like clearly anything that the Bible is representing is like believe this or doom. Whereas, this is where I specified earlier when it comes to like whether you know you're into witchcraft or whether you're an atheist or whatever, and like watch you know if you're believing any level of spirits or paranormal or not like there's not a carrot and stick routine no one if you don't believe in paranormal like that's just one less topic someone's going to bring up to you like there's not a carrot stick routine uh science is a tool it's incomplete but it's a de developing tool that we use to understand the world around us so I feel in my personal understanding that it's incomplete and that there are things that aren't explained, but I don't claim that witchcraft or paranormal is scientific because it cannot be examined in a lavatory and things cannot be repeated. So I just want to specify that while I, if cornered, I will say that I believe in paranormal and I, you know, do use witchcraft. I do not claim that it's scientific. So that's another bump that's... I've procrastinated on this because I didn't know how else to cover it, so I'll just say it like it is. And that's as far as I can expand on that. So, First Peter, uh, he... I didn't check this, but he's... he. This is back to Mike again. Abstain from freshly desires... Um, life and worldly wants continues to claim believing in what there is no evidence of is better than the scientific method and what we can prove and I think he was actually being literal with that because it, there's at certain points where he actually makes the claim that praying is better than like some of the people he's came in that were anti- getting the shot, and stuff like that, so, yeah, uh, if you did wrong, take responsibility, if you did right, but accused, stick up with boundaries, so here, I put in quotations, I guess even a broke watch is right twice a day, like, yeah, I agree, like, there's, that's common sense, you know, that's even in the, you know, point blank and Luciferian rules, is like, own up to shit you did, and try to make things if you do something, you know, wrong, make it better. You know, fix it. Claims all about me will make you miserable. Um, so here I have that there is something to be said about balance. B 
being successful but not greedy, work toward your goals, but also do so with pride that you earned you know, you earned it rather than taking it from others. Claims not believing in quote God or Jesus sacrifice is unforgivable. Um, so I have Rover laughing my ass off. This is what cults are made of. Believe in my holy book of fables or else, really? Believe in what I can't prove or you're a fool. Like and this one a couple of times and there's even a um I've mentioned him before. Um, this Jewish fellow that even he said it, calling people a fool for something that you, you know, again, th this is where, okay, if I was to say, like, I can't do a spell in front of you and, like, have money the next day, like, I don't, I'm not confident that that's going to happen like that. Okay? But essentially, like, if. I'm really trying to relate here. Essentially, even the um, the Jewish guy was like, you can't call somebody a fool because for something that you can't reproduce right in front of them. Right? Uh, it's complicated, but like, at least I can acknowledge that there's not a spell or ritual I'm going to do that's going to make... A spirit show up on camera in a verifiable way that's scientific that's why I said earlier it's not scientific in, in that very sense it's not something that I can just show you however at least I have the decency to not call you a fool for not believing me that's the difference here and I'm not going to threaten you for not believing me like threaten you with what fire after you die like okay there's not even proof that's an empty threat so th that's the difference you know I mean no one cares if you don't believe at least from pagan kind of ideas I don't know it's just irritating um, claims again that the Bible is true because the Bible says so that's circular reasoning uh, Mike and crowd depicts what Jesus looked like and that and authenticity so I guess they were trolling him <laughs> I thought it was funny and then it actually reminded me we're quote we are not to make engraven image so like that's in the Ten Commandments and like now they're depicting his image like isn't that against the rules so I thought that was funny uh, so then he content Mike continues claims Jesus looked like an average person um, let's see here Claims, quote, Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. Uh, I don't know which uh, video it is. I, w I will debate on whether or not to put a Mr. Deity clip in here. But this reminds me, I'll, I'll, I'll write it down aside. There's an episode of Mr. Deity that's absolutely hilarious of how this does not make sense. 100% man and God. I, I think I'll, I'll find the clip and put it in there. Claims faith is a virtue. Uh, claims a book written by God or inspired by God is too complex for us to understand on our own. So, if the Bible is a quote love letter to us, which is, I'm using his words, but we can't comprehend it, doesn't that defeat the purpose? It's, you know, uh... I didn't check on this. I don't know if this is accurate. Romans 118, Wrath of God Revealed. I, I didn't bother looking this one up, but you can check it and see if I'm right. Claims that we are created to want to know God. This is the whole written on your heart argument. Uh, we are designed to want to worship God. So uh, that one I got to problem with before I even read the notes just we were designed to want to worship God so we were designed with a slave mentality like, that's not love uh, so here I have uh, bullshit uh, how many civilizations before Christianity and many around us don't believe in just because of one doctrine and then claims you send yourself to hell We I've heard this one before so I'm like, I beg, to, I beg to differ. Love a dictator with a gun to your head or he will shoot. Like, how is that a choice? Uh, 
claims God wants us in heaven. And I put dot dot to kiss his ass and worship him forever? Question mark. Uh, continues to claim not believing is the only unforgivable sin. Of course it is. You know, in a dictatorship, you must kiss his ass, otherwise you're not doing it right, apparently. So, while I don't believe in the, quote, God of the Bible, even if, somehow, the so-called, quote, God were to be true, I'd rather burn than to worship a God under a uh, penalty of simple disbelief. So just not believing is enough to burn. Not to mention the lack of morality revealed in the Holy Book of Fables. Uh, or as... Uh, yeah, claims that we are deserving of hell because of sin. Inherit at birth. Therefore, human sacrifice and blood magic is the key to being saved. Claims that we are the uh, we are nothing without him. So, like, yeah. So, there's a helplessness vibe happening here, isn't there? So, yeah. And I actually brought this up. I think I said it in my notes before, where I've told my like this does not sound like something. If I was a therapist. And we were talking about something non-religious. And someone was just like... And they were talking about a, a um, relationship with an, another human. Okay? Not even a guy. Just another human. And they were like, I'm nothing without this person. This... You know, this... My life is meaningless if this person is not doing this. And they're, you know... Uh, they're only bad like this. It's only on their bad days. If you only knew them on their good days, like this sounds like an abusive relationship. Um, you know, there's a really bad pattern here. I've pointed this out to him point blank. I didn't really do anything. I'm just saying I did point it out to him. Uh, is this a prayer to a loving God or the sound of? Oh, there you go. Or is this the sound of someone in an abusive relationship? So. I cut myself early. If you only knew him on the good days, he hurts me because he loves me. I deserve to be in pain. It's suffering. So, like, yeah, that's... I actually got ahead of myself. But, yeah, exactly. So, that's what I... I didn't realize I already had that wrote. Uh, but, so there you go. If suffering brings God pleasure, thinking for yourself and self-love is, quote, evil. I'd rather be, quote, evil any day than to bring quote God pleasure and then fuck Jehovah slash Yahweh whatever and yeah so this video is already 22 minutes long and overdue but there's a reason why I even if I was to like stop believing in spirits or whatever something would like absolutely convince me or whatever I would still not be, I would become an atheist long before I'd ever become a Christian again. And even if, for the hugest fucking fattest impossible if, this is more impossible than the flat earth and all that crazy reptile conspiracy nonsense, the most craziest bullshit possible would be like if this story were to somehow be true, I would still not worship the motherfucker. I'm cursing now, but like I would still not worship that kind of God. That God is not worthy of praise. Even if somehow somebody believed that's true. And if you think that I'm being cruel or, you know, whatever, please tell me. How is, how is this okay? How is that okay? It's not. That's not right. That's not love. It's not mercy. So I'll leave it there, something to think about if you're a Christian.